Now we're watching a cold front now work its way into the picture. The cold front is sweeping across the country. As the cold front has not yet arrived. Wait a minute. What is a cold front? Well, a cold front is simply the leading edge of a cold air mass. But to understand that, we need to know exactly what an air mass is. So, an air mass is simply a body of air with uniform temperature, humidity, and pressure. These air masses can span hundreds or even thousands of square miles as they are pushed around the planet by planetary wind systems. Let's take a look at one such air mass. In the United States, we're often affected by large continental polar, or CP, air masses that get pushed down from Canada to the continental United States. As we said earlier, these air masses are going to have common characteristics of temperature, pressure, and humidity. Well, continental polar air masses, as the name implies, tend to be cold and dry. Now we also know that a cold front is just the leading edge of a cold air mass. So right here is where we're going to see our cold front. This is the front edge of the CP air mass. And along that frontal boundary, where you see the white line with the symbol of triangles pointing in the direction that the air mass is moving, we're going to experience a short period of intense precipitation that occurs right along the frontal boundary the area shown in green. But why is that? So to understand that, we need to take a closer look. So let's take a look at what that CP, that cold, dry air mass, would look like at the surface if we could actually see it. It would look something like this, a heavy, dense, fast-moving freight train of air that moves along the surface rather quickly, driven by global winds. In this diagram, the cold front would be right here, along the leading edge. Now we don't know much about the surrounding air, but we can assume that it's going to be warmer than the cold air within the CP air mass. So this air is going to be somewhat warmer. And we know that warm air is less dense than cold air. And so when that CP air mass plows its way along, the warm air ahead of it has nowhere to go but up and that warm air is going to be forced to rise. And in many cases, at a cold front, it's going to be forced to rise quickly. And what happens when air rises? Well, it expands, it spreads out, and that in turn causes it to cool down, eventually reaching its dew point, which is the temperature at which it's holding all of the water vapor that it can. After that point, the water vapor has nowhere to go, so it condenses and that forms clouds, rain, and other precipitation. And that's going to follow our front no matter where it goes. So as you can see, if you're standing on the surface, you'll experience a short period of fairly intense precipitation that occurs when the front passes by. So let's review by looking at our map again. With a cold front, we can predict exactly what the characteristics will be. I have my cool, dry air, I have my front, I have warmer air out ahead of it, and then right along that boundary is our short period of intense precipitation. And that's going to follow the front wherever it goes. And so that's how a cold front works. Thanks for listening.